Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Eric. I'm going to be going through Everspace 2 with you today and where we're at and what we've been up to. Um, I am preparing some elements to show you right out of the gate. So we are going to start the stream in just a couple more minutes. Thank you for your patience. I am delighted to show you some really neat things, especially for those who haven't been able to see the current development build just yet. So hold on tight. We'll be starting this up in just one moment. I think we are ready to start into this. I certainly hope so. I'm sure you're all super excited for this. So let's go ahead and transition on over. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the official Rockfish Games community stream that we do every single Friday. And uh, why is that NVIDIA going up? You sneak out of there, NVIDIA. This isn't a sponsored stream for you guys. What is this nonsense? But my name is Eric Schrader. I'm the community ambassador. I'm also a quality assurance tester and a game design consultant. So um, we've been working hard on a lot of different processes in the background of the game. Um, and what we're going to be doing, I'm just, I, I set up a little instance right now. I'm probably going to die. Uh, hopefully, hopefully we don't because that would be, you know, really embarrassing. But I wanted to talk about some of the new things that uh, we have going on. You can already tell straight away in our home base, we've got much cleaned up UI in comparison to what all of you have seen from the prototype. So just kind of like healthfully, you know, show you some of that stuff, uh, hopefully without pushing any wrong buttons. <laughs> and if I do, hey, sweet reveal, right? Excellent, oh my gosh. So I also wanted to address uh, one question that I saw out of YouTube really quickly. It's a good question, I wanna make sure everybody knows. So the question comes from a username that I cannot pronounce. Um, I think it's Laserhead. Uh, welcome to the stream. Um, he asks, is the current situation going to slow down development? I'm sure that you're referring to COVID-19 and it's sweeping across the world. And yes, it has had an impact on us. We did outline this in one of our Kickstarter updates. I implore you to seek that out, uh, read a little bit about it. It really comes down to like our marketing and PR and other games that have shifted their time frames. Um, and also, you know, the fact that we're all working from home, but rest assured it hasn't thrown us off too much. In fact, it's only, it's only like, it's actually helped us in some cases to adjust what we're working on to better suit you guys whenever it's ready. So yeah, 
it's it's coming together in all the normal senses, just in a little bit of a different way, you know, much like anyone who's still working and working from home right now. So rest assured, we are still plugging away. Everything is good. Uh, I also want to say hello to the ridiculous number of people over on Twitch. You guys are wonderful. A lot of bright and happy people from our community. It's always a pleasure. Thank you for being here. You really make my day, truly. You truly do. So thank you. All right, so right out of the gate, I want to show you, I'm going to push some buttons. I'm sure that Tula Tula Mayo is just going to freak out. Uh, so we are going to go to the map right now. So, I do have a mission. It's a temporary mission, so don't read into it too much. Um, so, yeah, but you're going to see some highlights and stuff, but let's look at the map really quick. Um, this is a huge difference from what the prototype looks like, uh, mostly because of this line that's going on here. And it says unknown region. Just pretend that says home turf, okay? <laughs> And each one of these regions is something that we talked about, was it last week? Two weeks ago. Basically, we have regions in each one of these solar systems. And these regions are going to have an impact uh, on your decisions and on the different factions that are there. Um, and maybe even a little bit more than that. We'll have to see. We'll have to see as we develop the game further. But each of them helps you see how all of these different worlds are coming together and how that impacts the story as well as your decisions that you make throughout the game. Now, don't think of this as being like a super crazy, like advanced simulation where these planets are rotating around and based on their rotation, you'll see certain parts of what's going on with the light hitting it in different locations and then like having these super advanced AIs, having these power struggles within these different regions that are constantly vying for power that you can get involved with. Like it's not, it's, whoa, slow down, right? Like the reason we're incorporating these regions is so that you have more transparency of your trade lanes, of who is in control of those spaces and areas, maybe to give you opportunities, maybe for you to go up against a really strong challenge. And again, these are all gonna unlock as you go through and play the game. Each one of these unknown regions has a certain flavor to it, has a certain effect, and you'll see more of them pop up as you go venturing out into these other star systems as well, since there still are, uh, it looks like we still have eight. That's a good sign. We haven't removed any. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it's, it's slowly coming together. I'm really pleased with these map results, um, and there's gonna be so much more to show you here. It's just, it's gonna be a lot of fun. Let's also talk a little bit about, uh, let's just talk about the home base for a second, just because it's really easy to do. The home base, you have your storage and your crafting. The crafting isn't implemented yet, so sorry. I can't even accidentally push this and show you something, but know that crafting is something we are looking into. We're exploring it even as of right now as to what that looks like and how it's going to suit you up as you're progressing through the game space. Um, not only just in the capacity of like making new things, but also refining old things. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, finally, let's just talk about the inventory. Um, it looks pretty standard compared to what we have in the prototype, of course. We do have some elements that allow you to customize uh, what is shown first to last. And then all of these components are very much the same with some updated uh, updated qualities so that like, for example, if you wanted to compare this high velocity cannon uh, to the pulse laser, I think there's a way to, yeah. So you can actually see the comparison and the weapon shows up on the upper right. So you can like see the weapons being compared to one another as well. Subtle little UI changes and updates to help you see more clearly what you're comparing to, seeing all the numbers, all the figures, blah, blah, blah. Just trying to clean it up for your enjoyment. We're probably gonna see something get damaged here because my ship is not ready for the combat that I created outside. We're probably gonna die and that's okay because through this process, I want you to soak in the UI differences that are also present in our current development build. Excellent. Talon, no, you're hoping for super advanced AI. Oh my gosh. That would be, that would be crazy. Rest assured, we will have faction to faction interactions. Um, it's just gonna look probably different than maybe what you're currently expecting. We'll have a lot more to talk about what that looks like 
Absolutely. And I think it's gonna come together nicely, so it'll be good. It's a little bit like open world territory, like in Mad Max or Saints Row 3, except, um... Except not as... I wouldn't say it's as advanced as that. Like, it's much more helping you understand... Um, I mean, it, yeah, you know, it is, but it's not like, <laughs> that's such a hard, that's such a hard th talking point, um, towards, but, um, yeah, I mean, there are going to be interactions within certain regions that you wouldn't find in others for sure. Um, and it's going to dictate the types of jobs you can pick up. It's going to help outline objectives and stuff like that. And through the story, we'll also see a lot of alterations that are made through those regions as well. Um, so yeah. Is the background music new? Probably. You're probably going to be hearing a little bit of new music for sure. Eek! The real angry snail says, now it's not about seeing the rotation, uh, but the planet's rotating after a while, so sectors don't always stay the same, and there is new configurations, and you should be able to see rotation after one month of in-game time. Even think something about as what seems to be as simple as like orbital rotations is remarkably complicated in a video game world eek so essentially think about it like this like if you have if you have points on a map right you say you've designated this point to be a certain thing and that's where a planet is and then we're implementing rotations of planets and say we have to figure out well how long is it going to take a planet to go all the way around what makes it feel realistic what makes it feel good from an arcade standpoint then we got to make all those subtle calculations so that rotation could also mean that a site at a planet is no longer in daylight so then we have to figure out okay well then if it's if it's rotated here, then it would be at nighttime, so that changes that point. It also changes the point on the map. This is just for one instance of one planet, and we have to do this calculation for every single location on every single planet that we implement into the game, and that's not including what happens based on the interactions we have flying out in super light travel, where all of a sudden you have celestial objects that might pass over one another. Uh, it might completely destroy certain locations that would otherwise be accessible. It, it's just, there's a lot. There's so many factors just by doing something as simple as creating a planetary orbit around a star. Um, and so we're not looking into it. Like we're keeping it simple. You're going to have your map and your map is going to be static, set in stone so you know exactly where you want to go and what you want to accomplish when you look at that. It's not gonna be changing. It'd be more confusing than, than anything else. So I understand, I understand where you're coming from. Just know that this is something we've already internally talked about. We want it to be as straightforward as possible so you can get your ship out flying and blowing stuff up, much like we're gonna do right the heck now, yes? Excellent. Now again, please keep in mind, I'm probably gonna insta-die. So, here we go. <laughs> so we got some outlaw bombers and whatnot. You can see there's a, a mission up top. You see that nice little UI, edge of the universe. Don't worry about it right now. It's still a work in progress. Our focus is on these bad boys out here. So um, I know my head's kind of in the way of some of this UI. Actually, let me just uh, see you later, just for a moment. Just want you to see all the clear UI right now, all the buttons you can press, and kind of get a feel for what this does look like. And you'll see that there's been a lot of modifications to the core of the game that we first started with. Oh, that music though. Oh, that music! I'm glad I'm still good at circle strafing. Woo! So you can see a lot of the, the look and the feel does have that sameness to Everspace 1. Mixed with some new challenges, like this bomber now has this orange bar that represents his armor. And he doesn't actually like getting too close to us anymore. You can actually see he's flying away. He's backwards strafing to keep barraging us with missiles. So this is just one sample of how the UI has updated a little bit since Everspace 1 as well. So we are going to blast his shields down. And then, now that we're close, he's shooting us with a sh scatter gun makes things difficult and now he's going to try and fly away but we are going to try and 
bring down his armor, which we did. Beautiful. Also, let's just take a quick look at the camera mode, because I know a lot of people really enjoy that. Just see this guy getting completely roasted. Oh, yeah. Sorry about your hole there, buddy. Hmm. He's going down hard. And we do have uh, we do have a lot of different features um, that we will be implementing to adjust uh, lighting and uh, focal points and all that type of stuff. Can't really show you too much of it right now because we've had to unimplement some of the things while we're working on them. But uh, yeah, so that was our little combat sequence there. Let's see if we can find some goods around here. And also I'm going to... Uh... I'm here again, hello. So, very fluid, it's coming together. We're pretty happy with how, how everything's kind of lining up um, as of right now. It's feeling pretty good. So let's go ahead and open some containers. Take some goods, wiring kit, liquor, cargo unit, wonderful. So this is actually another talking point. So within our inventory, Items that you acquire out in space are not something that you can just equip on the fly. In fact, the only thing that you can do with that on the fly status right now are your weapons. So if you're in the middle of a heavy combat sequence and you find a new weapon, you can change that out on the fly. It feels good just because it's like, ooh, a new synergetic weapon or something that's more stronger in the heat of the moment. We wanted to keep that in there to your liking. All of the ship modifications, meaning all of the, the modules, the core modules of the ship, all of these bits need to be equipped when you are at a station. So even though we got that new cargo unit, we need to go in here in order to plug it into the ship's slot. This is where we're currently with development. Does that feel good? Does that feel bad? We're still figuring it out ourselves? We'll keep you posted, and I'm sure you'll let us know whenever we hit alpha. So now we can apply this. We've got more space. I can put these nanobots that are small on my ship. Wait, is this? Oh yeah, we can stack those. Beautiful. Uh, same sensor, same energizer. We don't need any of that stuff, but we will go ahead and organize this on the ship. Um, so there's not really anything I can show you. Let's see, anything else? No, I can't really show you anything else um, aside from most of these elements that I've just shown you, but what I will do is I'm gonna create a couple more enemies to fight, and we'll show you the ultimate of this particular ship and where it's currently at. In order to do that, I am gonna have to go into my sneaky area again um, to generate some enemies. So we'll just take a moment, no worries whatsoever, and uh, it should be good. So one second, and uh, we'll jump right back in and we'll show you the alt, how's that sound? So thank you for your patience. I'm also gonna be trying to look at some of your questions while I'm doing this as well. <clears throat> so I see some questions over on YouTube that say, can you change the home base or nah? That is a great question. Maybe. Maybe not. There is a very large world that you'll be playing in and it would be really annoying if you had to fly from one area all the way across the map to another just to do one little thing. And we recognize that. So we are looking at ways for fast travel and bases and stuff like that. It's a good question. I see another person who asked about the lockdown affecting development. Um, work from home is going really good. You know, it's, it's a process, it's a change. Everybody's kind of going through it. Some people deal with it better than others. I, I would say that we're in a, a pretty good spot. I would say that we're in a pretty good spot. So yeah, I wouldn't worry too much. So I almost have our situation taken care of here. And by taken care of, I mean built out. We're gonna try and uh, <laughs> not die first. And then we will get it started right back up. Do alts do big boom? Oh uh, yeah, they have a pretty big boom. 
Oh, I see a lot of requests to turn up the music. Okay, let me see if I can, uh, let me see if I can get that hype. Okay, so when the game comes back in, it might be it might be a little too loud. I know this is pretty loud now. Is that too loud? You guys want it loud, don't you? <laughs> For a place called Home Turf, there sure seems to be large outlaw presence. You're right. And I can't explain why that is because I'd be spoiling parts of the story-centric elements of the game. Louder music, lower sounds! It's pretty loud now, I feel like. So we're gonna go ahead and play like this. And we're gonna go fly out and take on some more foes. Hopefully, again, I don't die. Should be good. If it ends up being too loud and you can't hear me, maybe you don't wanna hear me. Maybe I'll just shut up and do this, yeah? Okay, let's do that. Ouch, that backfired. Yeah. Okay. Man, who generated so many of these enemies? Drugs first. Ooh. Ouch. Come on. Give it to me. Close. Woo! You can see the struggle is real when you're a low level. Woo! Okay, we got two more. Is this just a normal fighter? Oh, it's a normal fighter! Let's take him out. Oh, good. Now I can show you the true power against this one guy. I'm gonna generate some more guys. <laughs> it's important. <laughs> we don't wanna we don't wanna just do this against one guy. That how lame would that be? Okay, one second. We have to make this a little bit more interesting. Just a little bit. I mean, come on. Okay. Here we go. Oh gosh! <laughs> it's okay, I can respawn. Let's try that again. Oh please let me respawn. Oh no! Oh no, I broke the game! We can fix this, don't you worry. Okay, I'm gonna load a new save, save state. It's totally fine. <laughs> oh my gosh, I wanna show you the alt status, okay? Clearly you can see, we're still working on the game. Things aren't, uh, things aren't necessarily as, as, you know, clean as they should be. We're still a year and a half out of development. So if somebody's like, oh my gosh guys, this game's so broken. 
Obviously, we are still working on it. So I just need a moment. My apologies, one moment. I do want to show you how sweet this alt is. So your patience is very much appreciated. We will get this fixed right as rain in just one moment. Oh my gosh. All right, so what I'm going to do, here we go. All right. We got things uh we got things figured out, boys and girls. All right, here we go. Thank you for your patience. I really appreciate it. Let's go destroy a bunch of enemies with our ultimate from the Sentinel. Now, for those of you who don't know about the Sentinel, um let's see. What we have right here is the ultimate called Static Overload. And this allows you to temporarily turn your ship's primary weapons into lightning guns. So if you're familiar with Everspace One and the Sentinel, it's essentially creating that weapon temporarily. And it's like so much more powerful than Everspace One used to be. We are doing this for a number of reasons. One, because it's awesome. And two, because we want there to be some type of ultimate effect for each ship to be very unique from one another that gives you like a pretty strong boost in that moment when you hit your ultimate. So you have to choose if you want to save it for a specific engagement or just completely use it repeatedly the second it gets charged or, you know, any other options thereof while you're also collecting all of these unique consumables and weapons and, and whatnot. So yeah, so we're going to do this. I still see more questions. That's excellent. I will answer your questions as soon as we blow up some dudes. Here we go. Let's so focus in on this outlaw bomber, I think. Oh, yeah. All right, so you can see that we just took out a lot of guys all at once. Oh, that feels so much better. So now all we have to deal with is like one or two guys left. That's it. One or two guys left. Oh, of course, one of which is the bomber. And again, each ship has some sort of unique take on what that special ultimate's going to be. Some are going to be very powerful when it comes to uh, speed. Some are going to be really powerful when it comes to um, weapons, of course. Some are going to be powerful when it comes to utility. And depending on what type of ship that you are flying, you're going to get those advantages by charging up your ultimate. And so far, we're pretty happy with the results, I would say. Audio is peaking. Oh. The music for the ultimate didn't work. Whoops. Ah, you know what happens. But I also generated just some random stuff to where we can outfit ourselves a little bit more. And also... Uh, show you a, a little bit more about um, the different types of items that you can find. Uh, didn't get a legendary, unfortunately, but uh, we have this superior one. It shows you that it's added eight firepower, um, and it can't overheat, and it can't be damaged. So these are two elements that we are pulling over, essentially, from Everspace One, but there's a unique twist on it. So instead of Everspace One's conditionary elements of ship components being damaged, now your items, your modules that you've plugged into your ship are what gets damaged. So in the case of this, this heat plating 
is completely devoid of that happening to it. This can never be damaged and this can never overheat. And that's gonna be on every single, every single one of these items. Can I visit other areas in this version? Unfortunately, I cannot. That would be a little bit too spoilery. In fact, I think even if I went into super light, it would be spoilery because I have a mission active. <laughs> yeah, this armor is actually, that's pretty good. So we have other things like just resources themselves that are rare that will provide you with new opportunities for trade lanes or crafting or both, depending on what they can do and how you can outfit yourself. Oh, here's a flak cannon. Oh my gosh, I know a lot of people actually haven't even seen the flak, uh, just because it's not implemented in the prototype except for the legendary. So let's go ahead and fire that so you guys can just see it. Um, and then we also have a superior cooler gun, which can't overheat and can't be damaged as well. We're working on a lot of different modifiers. Some of them come up a lot. It's just because they're not all implemented yet. I can assure you there's going to be a lot of randomization with stuff like this. We also have an armor, uh, uh, an auto cannon that has plus 10 increased damage against armor. What's also really nice is that when you compare it to something else you have equipped, you can actually see at the bottom there, it says cannot be damaged minus one. It's not the best representation at the, at the moment, but we want to show you that even your special attributes uh, like how those compare from one weapon to another as well. That way you're not only thinking about the stats, but you're also thinking about the properties. Seems like an important thing to compare, right? We do too. Ah, all right. Um, so yeah, There's a bunch of other stuff. We're just gonna organize it by value. Oh, that's so clean. I love things showing me the value and how much I'm gonna sell it for. That's, this is my favorite button right now in the prototype. Actually, it's not my favorite button, but for organizing my equipment, it sure is. Oh my gosh. All right, so let me just fly out and just very briefly show you the flat cannon, just so you can kind of see it. And here where it's currently at, again, this is not complete. <laughs> I also like how there's this random effect. It's work in progress, boys and girls. <laughs> So the flat cannon has a nice meaty sound. And we're still working on sounds. So you can tell, you can tell things are still progressing. They're coming together. Bluster says, <laughs> I know that's exactly what you said. You're like, <laughs> yeah, so we're pretty happy with the results. But we know that we can still up our game further. We've got time to do so, and we're questioning everything. Even the sound design. We're still, like, making sure that it has the best feeling. Because, like, when you go into a sci-fi universe, and you're flying a spaceship, we want your weapons to have that really rich, heavy weight to them. Because if they don't, you know, it's... It doesn't, it's, it, I mean, that, that's a make or break experience for some people, and we understand that. And that's definitely a point that we are focused on to bring to the greatest fruition we possibly can. So your flat cannon, it's going to sound meaty. Your coil gun, it's going to sound zippy. Your pulse laser, it's going to sound energetic. Uh, each, each one's going to have its own flavor and feel, and we are still looking at those and making it the best it can possibly be. Uh, we can also look at the cockpit here for a second. Again, this is very much a work in progress uh, cockpit. So you can see it's even like having trouble loading in a little bit here. But the goal is to have all of your necessary information available for you to where even if you didn't have your magical HUD, that you could operate straight out of here like this, right? Being able to look around, being able to navigate. Obviously, you would have a super polished looking interior instead of placeholders. But we know this is important. We know it's very important and we are, in fact, working on it. We've also heard a lot of people talk about the uh, the UI and how it can get pretty full. Like even, even looking out in our UI right now, you see like above my head, there's a lot of little indicators there. We recognize that. We wanna make sure that it doesn't feel like you're overwhelmed. And this is still a work in progress. We are looking at some options 
to see about cleaning that up, making some like brighter versus some of them darker. Um, ways to look at it, maybe even from the map, maybe, we're not sure. Like we're looking at, we're looking at our options. And as always, if you guys, um, whenever we get to that point, specifically in alpha, where it's like you have these thoughts where you're like, oh man, it would make so much sense if they just did X. That's so obvious. Why would a developer not do that? Because I know it's gonna happen. Too low to a mail. Um, <laughs> whatever. Insert random person here. It's fine. We value your feedback, your ideas, your suggestions, whether they're amazing or if they're hot garbage. That's fine because together we're going to make this game the best it can possibly be. And if you don't say what's on your mind, maybe that's a missed opportunity. So, excellent. Was there anything specific that I've shown just in this little bit of time that you guys wanted to see again? Had more questions about anything like that? Because I am more than happy to show a little bit more. Um, and by a little bit more, I mean most of the stuff that we just showed. Oh, it says home turf now. Look at that. I'm more than happy to talk a little bit more on this. And I'm sure Michael is able to answer some questions as well. Oh yeah, I'm not I'm not worried about the projectile stuff. Oh, the sounds really off. Oh no, really? Even from even from the flak? You know what? Maybe I have the sound turned up too much. What happens if I do this? Is that better? Did someone order seven feet of awesome? Oh my gosh, Caden. I'm only 6'9". That's a little over 2 meters for all of our European viewers. A button to cycle through each loot type, asked Bloodstar. Um, well, for controllers, there absolutely will be. Just looking for your delicious questions. Too low to the says my suggestions are hot garbage. Oh man. It's good, man. More ships. I oh my gosh. I would love to show you more ships in the build. The problem with that is that they are legitimately not ready to show. Um, I would not only just be showing you blockouts, but in some cases I would not be showing you very realistic blockouts to what our vision is of the ship. It, w it just wouldn't do it justice. So we're still working on those ship designs and all of the, the wings and the engines and the bodies and the internal cockpits and we're crazy people and you need to love on Matthias and Alex for their incredible work on all the player ship models. Um, but yeah, like we want to get those to a state where when we show them to you, it's going to be that like super wow factor. We have shown some of the blockouts before, like with the gunship, for example. And um, I think that I think that maybe I can go back like, you know, a little bit in the stream. I can show you what some of those blockouts looked like for anyone who's missed them. But otherwise, like it's one of those processes where it's like it's just not something we can show until it's ready. And I hope that you understand that. Um, but also know that when we do show it, it's gonna be, it's gonna be lit, as the young boys say. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm sorry for that. I apologize. I, I, I don't understand memes as well as everybody else does. <laughs> Literally two to three times I miss the live streams because I'm busy and I'm tired. Hey, welcome back to the stream. It's good to see you. Is he even responding to YouTube chat? Uh, no. That question was from YouTube chat. <laughs> I'm going through a lot of questions. So how explorable are planetary rings? So the rings are basically an aesthetic right now. Um, so like even going through the map, I can't even show you a planet with rings because we don't like all of these planets. I don't know how clever you guys are, but like this, this moon and this planet, they're exactly identical. Even with like this moon and this planet, they're the identical textures, okay? Like we haven't gotten that far yet into the map to like represent everything in its truest capacity. But the rings are just aesthetic. You fly through rings and nothing happens. There may be some instances that we apply in the future where you can fly say into an area that is a ring of a planet and it's an asteroid belt, something like that. 
Um, but we are, we're not thinking about it in a realistic capacity of you're gonna like, oh, you fly through rings, you just instantly blow up. We don't think that would be very fun. We get that there could be some elements of navigating, uh, you know, an Astri belt on the fly or something like that. The long and the short of it is, is that we want the travel, especially in this area, to be as simplified as possible for you to get to where you want to go. We don't want to waste your time with a bunch of needless side elements that you have to deal with. We want to provide opportunities if you take care in traveling from point A to point B, but that's kind of where it's at at the end of the day. A lot of stuff can happen in a year and a half. If you have an outstanding idea, much like we talked about before, that you think needs to be implemented for uh, rings on a planet, let us know. Um, I showed you the, the graphic a couple times. We do have a Discord. We do, uh, we're active on Twitch, uh, obviously Twitter. We are active in Reddit. Uh, we have a forum that you can go to, everspace.game. You can go to the forums there. S uh, s just throw us all of your ideas. And uh, this is going to be especially important when we start the alpha. And the alpha begins in beginning of June. Is that right? Question mark? It's around there. We'll have an announcement about that pretty soon, I'm sure. Mm, I love you guys. So good question. Will there be a Dune-themed planet with giant worms? Man, just going in for the kill with that question. Straight up, like, give me the answers. We have shown some pretty hot concept art of some very large creatures. That, that's all, that's the answer. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> oh my gosh. We'll have to find out. What am I drinking? Water. It's just water. Delicious water. Gigantic tentacles probably will be a sand sandworm? A sandworm? In space? Where can I find the Discord link? Ah! Let me type it out for you. Uh, Discord.gg slash rockfish games. That is, you'll have to copy pasta it, but that'll get you where you need to go. Um, I cannot show super light in charging right now, unfortunately. Space whale is big mood. I have the feels. Can I restart this build later and try the alt? Yeah, I can do that. That's not a problem. We can give it another go. Volumetric fog and the planet's rings. We want to do a lot with how the game looks and how the game presents itself because like obviously when you have something like a uh, freaking photo mode we want to make sure that you can see all of those super polished details right like we want to make sure it's good actually let me let me turn the lights off we want to make sure it's good right and like from that it's like everything matters we're looking into volumetric lighting we're looking into um was a chaos destruction we're looking into um, even possibly ray tracing. We're looking, we're looking into a lot of different, uh, abilities that are out there on the market to make our game really pop because we like, we like how it looks and we know you do too. And if we can capitalize on that, oh heck yeah, we're going that direction. Going to re-ask, oh, sorry, T3 cube. I'm sorry if I missed it. Uh, some of the heavy cannons, like the flat cannon, going to have some recoil to go with that meaty punch when discharged. Um, so, I don't necessarily think it's going to. I feel like in a very large metal spaceship with, I mean, like, even the comparison point of these flat cannons, look at the size of them. Like, look at that flat cannon in comparison to the, the ship. I think if this thing knocked the ship back then this thing shouldn't be known as a fighter because it's clearly not outfitted accordingly if it can't even hold its own with a weapon. So a lot of the weapons are going to have their abilities uh, differentiated by their stats. That's going to be the main distinguishing factor. I'm not saying it's not possible to have certain weaponry or secondaries that give the ship a kickback. It could come into play later, but as of right now, it does not. This is a good observation.
Yeah. Um, I could I could see something that's playful with like, I don't know. You have like a, a smaller ship that's like maybe. All right, I'm spitballing here. Okay, that that I haven't even presented this to the team. Okay, but this would be kind of funny. So, in Everspace One, we actually restricted certain weapons from being applied to other ships, right? So like, for example, with the scout, you simply can't use the flat cannon. Maybe that's because the flat cannon is too large and would actually kick the kick back the scout. The most maneuverable ship in the game would be hindered by using it. So instead of restricting the ship in Everspace 2, you would have access to use it, but it would have like a big warning on it that says, weapon not designed for current craft something like that so you plug your flat cannon in on your scout knowing that it's disaster master time and you hit the click button and the ship just gets thrown backwards i don't know maybe that could be fun maybe that's something that you should start a conversation about in the discord or in the forums and maybe we can follow up on it that could be interesting i don't know so we'll have to we'll have to see what we can do I live for malfunctions. <laughs> oh man, I could see like somebody then being like, oh, okay, now you have to do a scout only run using the flat cannon. You have to finish the whole game. <laughs> but, uh, but I digress. The, the, main, the main thing at the end of the day is that we are not shooting for some type of like super realistic capacity with the spaceships and how they would actually operate in space using all of these very precise physics and requirements of how you need to like maintain yourself and all that type of stuff. No, you're diving in in an arcade space shooter with action RPG elements and you're looter shootering. We don't want to make it too crazy deep. So if there's elements that could make it more fun that do happen to be involved with kicking back the player ship, we'll look into it. If it's simply not fun or it just dis distracts from the, the core vision of what we're trying to offer with the game, it's not, it's not gonna happen. But ultimately, I love it when you guys ask these questions because it does start making us wonder like, what would that look like? How would this be possible? So it's good. So I see a lot more questions over on YouTube. Don't worry, I'm not shying away from you. I'll get you in just a second. I want to go back to the home base real briefly. So weapons would be like forward-facing engine. <laughs> yeah, I suppose you could say that, Talon. It'd be, it'd be interesting. It would be an interesting mechanic. I just don't know how I feel about it actually being implemented. All right, so questions over on YouTube. I got I got a lot of healthy questions, so we're going to run through them. Excelsior. I really appreciate you coming to all the streams, by the way. I can you're 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 like every single week. So thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. So, your question is maybe if you fly through rings, you drop out of super cruise and spawn in a random procedural generated area filled with asteroids. Uh, I don't want to get in trouble with my boss. <laughs> um but we'll, we'll see. Michael, what do you think about showing them another location uh, in, this, in this area? It might, it might be something that's a little revealing of a story mission. I don't know how you feel about that. What are your thoughts? Uh, let's see, maybe the mining ship you start with, you could have kick with the most powerful weapons. So the first ship that actually you start with isn't a mining ship. Um, there's a mining mission. Uh, we actually were debating on showing you the tutorial today. The long and the short of it is, is that the tutorial is simply not ready. But we might be able to have something to reveal fairly soon. So keep your eyes and ears peeled. Uh, things are coming together pretty well and it's almost ready to show you. But yeah, that first, uh, the first ship that you start with is definitely one that's designed to protect miners. Missed the explanation component damage and where? Oh yeah, okay, Girata uh, Giratina. I know that's a Pokemon name. I don't know how to pronounce it. So basically the way that the damage and overheating system works is that when you take a certain percentage of damage, um, no, I said that wrong. When you're at a certain percentage of damage and you take more damage, you have a chance 
to have a weapon uh, completely overheat or get damaged based on where you're at, what you're doing, your use of the weapon or the device, all that type of stuff. And so like this flat cannon, if we got hit, it could completely disable this weapon. Only if we bury that weapon recoil idea. Oh my gosh, Michael. <laughs> hey, it's just a suggestion. No worries. No worries. I could see some interesting use to it, but it's gone now. Forever. No more discussion about recoil weapons. Um, but no, so when the flak cannon, if it were to receive damage and become damaged, one of these attributes on the flak would be permanently adjusted until you got it repaired. So, for example, um, your fire rate could be cut in half. That would be the same how it works with Everspace 1. Your weapon component gets damaged, then all of your primary weapons shoot at half fire rate, and they cost twice as much energy to fire. Um, or it could be something where it's like your range is cut in half. So now your damaged flak can only be used when you're like super up in the grill of your opponents. Um, when it overheats, that's also going to be an adjustment of a modifier. Overheat works a little bit differently because there's going to be a cooldown timer whenever an item gets overheated. Uh, in fact, you will see it uh, here. Let's go ahead and, and do this. I don't think I have anything that can trigger it. Oh, I don't. Unfortunately, maybe this will. No, it doesn't. Um, but basically, whenever you would trigger an active effect for a duration, you would see it at the very top middle of the screen, and there would be a timer on it. Once that timer reaches zero, then the item or the weapon will no longer be overheated. So you basically have to wait it out instead of able to repair it. The, the other difference to that is you're either, like, if it's damaged, you can't get its stats back until you repair it, which means you're going to have to consume certain uh, resources that you've collected, versus overheat, it's just a timer. So if you're in the heat of a moment and you need access to a weapon that's overheated, you're just out of luck, and you got to figure out another way to play according to your strengths. Um, I see a question about a wingman feature. We have discussed the companions. There's not too much we can say about that. Um, it'll be a later point in time uh, for us to break that open because that's a big can of worms. There's a lot of things that come with it. There's a lot of expectations I think people have about it. And we want to be ready when we open that up. An escort drone act as a point defense. We we are definitely looking at drones and bringing them back in the same capacity from Everspace 1. And there was, in fact, a missile drone that did exactly what you're talking about as a point defense for missiles. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Some of these questions. You guys are fun. I like you. I like you a lot. Thank you for being here, everybody. Will we be able to fly dedicated mining ships? So, it feels kind of weird for me that a ship that looks like it's made for war mines stuff. Well, the fact of the matter is the entire game is first and foremost an arcadey spaceship shooter. So for us, that means everything's going to be emphasized in combat. Everything. That being said, you can outfit your ships and customize their look, maybe. Uh, to look like a mining vessel. Uh, especially the larger ships, I think they have a, a bit more of that style to them, and you'll see them eventually. So, there's not a dedicated mining ship. Every single ship is specifically made for combat. That is the focus. Will there be allegiance bars with different races, kind of like Galaxy on Fire 2? Hey, what an interesting game to reference. Hmm. Um, so we are looking into the faction system to be meaningful and surprising and also uh, incentive, incent, in, it, it helps incentivize the player. Words are hard, all right? Um, so we want to take a lot of great care in the interactions you have with other factions to push a narrative, to complete a side mission, to finish a job, um, to take control over a base. Like, there's going to be these different elements 
that are going to be meaningful for that faction system. Allegiances are absolutely going to be pushed and pulled in a lot of different directions through the course of the game. The level of detail that we're putting into those situations, we again, like since it's an arcadey spaceship shooter, we wanna put a lot of that emphasis there so that you're getting from point A to point B and doing what you want to do without like tons and tons of needless cataloging of, of data and figuring out, well, how do I interact with these people here? And what's my relationship with those people there? And, and how do I like do all like, we, we don't want it to be like strenuous on the player. We want it to be cut to the chase, get in and blow stuff up, right? That's really, really what we're aiming for at the end of the day. Before I show a new location, new location, I should restart the build. Okay, so I'm going to, um, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the main menu. Can I do that without revealing anything? I actually can't. So I'll go ahead and restart. We'll see if we can get some stuff fixed and try and venture to another location. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. But we'll find out live in just a moment. So uh, here's the Discord link, the, the Twitch links, or excuse me, Twitter links, uh, where you can go get more information and, and be involved with us. Uh, it's, a, it's a real good time. We have a lot of good time here. At least I hope we do. So, um, so it should be fun. Definitely get involved when you can. Can you show the alt again as well? Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, I can do that. Uh, so let's see if we can... Let's see what happens if we do this thing. One second. Getting some things prepped. You know, it's, it's always interesting to me because it's like, you know, you have these development streams where we want to show you as much as possible, but we also have to make sure we're being very careful in what we show. <laughs> It's just, it's just one of those things. But I really do appreciate your patience um, with us while we are showing you a bunch of new little things here and there. Hmm. All right, so what I'm trying to do right now is prepare another space for you guys to see. See if I can get something that's a little bit fun. The cockpit is empty. Ghost pilots confirmed. Oh my goodness. You know, guys, I am, I'm going to be honest. It's actually hard to find a new location to show you guys without, like, basically breaking everything. And um, I want to show you as much stuff as possible. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to adhere to uh, one of the requests out there to show the ultimate again. So I'm going to go ahead and prep that. And we will go from there. I did find something that was kind of fun to do, so uh, I will show you something a little bit new for some people who haven't seen uh, some of the material yet. So give me one second, we'll get it going right now. Let's see, here we are. I think this will work. Getting back up. Okay, good. Everything's been reset. 
We're going to show the ultimate one more time. Um, I know there's still a lot of questions that I haven't answered yet. Thank you for your patience as we show the ultimate one more time. Then we'll start getting through more of those. I love the question you're all asking. Like, I really appreciate you being here. I want to answer every single one of you. The reality is I might not get there. So that's all the more reason for you to join our Discord, engage with our forums, all of that stuff, so that we can make sure your voice is heard and you are getting responded to. All right, let's go ahead and fly out here and blast these guys to smithereens. So one of the things I wanted to show you are these outlaw detonator drones. So listen carefully. There's a lot of them. All right, so let's go ahead and blow them all up. Woo, that lightning gun. Look at that splash damage, though. GG. Did the music die again? Oh, that's unfortunate. But yeah, I mean, as you can see there, like we just toasted so many enemies. And it's it's ultimately gonna come down to when and how you use your alt, right? Um, to get the most effects. I feel like that one was pretty good. Sorry about the sound if it died for you all. But yeah, we're pretty happy with the results for this particular ship thus far. Okay, so let's answer some more questions because I know you guys got tons of them. Let's try and, let's try and get through this. Uh, Michael, the jump gate uh, is too far into the campaign. Okay, he, he recognizes that. Good. <laughs> Silly Michael. <laughs> he, get, he wants to show you guys too much. He's so excited, which you can't blame the man. We are really excited to show you more of the content that we've been working on. It's just, you know, you just got to find that right moment. All right, let's see here. Open world game. I see this from FirePro20. It was back a little bit, but thank you for your patience. It's an open world game, so design-wise, the world is being constructed in detail by artists, or is there some kind of procedural generation? Everything is handcrafted. We are using some very minor amount of procedural generation for certain areas and regions that aren't uh, nearly as significant for the main campaign. The main campaign is hand crafted. It's because we have very intentional level design that directs your engagements as well as your exploration to be rewarded from it. You can't reward exploration nearly as much if something is procedural because sometimes it just doesn't work out. Whereas if we hand craft it, it's far more meaningful. That's what we are doing. Good question. Any gameplay update to Everspace 2 this April? That would be pretty dope, wouldn't it? You could add a space leviathan living about a gas giant. That would be a boss fight. That's a pretty good suggestion. I like that idea. We'll have to see what happens in the future. Is each run different or similar to Everspace 1? Or is it a persistent open world? It is a persistent open world. Are we going to have a cooling system that reduces CD time and reduce the amount of overheat by percentages? You'll probably see that more as attributes associated with items as well as upgrades that you can apply and maybe even perks that you get along the way. Perks are the upgrades that uh, are, are applicable to your pilot. So no matter what ship you're flying in, you will get a bonus based on the perks that you choose. It's kind of like a little tech tree as you're leveling up in comparison to the items and the devices that you're choosing to outfit your unique ship class or subclass. There was a discussion about mining and a mini game similar to uh, Galaxy on Fire 2 on the Discord. Did you guys already discuss this internally? Yes. <clears throat> but will mining itself be viable if any ship can do it? Top notch indeed. So because the emphasis is on combat, and it's not on mining. We don't want mining to be exclusive in certain capacities or degrees. Um, 
But if you want to put emphasis on it, there will certainly be tools that allow you to do so. It's just not going to be something that's like, um, like one ship is the miner and, and nobody else is. Like we don't want to do that to a ship because then it's missing the vision of the game, the overarching vision, which is combat, right? So yeah, so good question. We've already thought about it and we have already been making some pretty strong decisions. Uh, moving forward with that. Do we know about Galaxy on Fire? Um, <clears throat> Michael, do you want to... <laughs> uh, yes, Galaxy on Fire 1 and 2 were made from uh, the team that is Rockfish Games. After Galaxy on Fire 2, we uh, created a game called Everspace. And that's where we're at now. I would like to have a bulky, tanky, super heavily armored slow ship with two auto turrets on top and bottom of the ship. I think it's too much, unfortunately, because it's going to be like frigate, but I hope so. Man, that's a lot. I mean, we can probably get you part the way there. I think we can find a middle ground for you. Does that seem fair? That seems fair. You know what? Instead of just having the, the game, like awkwardly in the background let me uh let me do something here uh let me see if i can find just some fun stuff to incorporate in the background uh some of the, some of these items we have uh talked about before in the past um but like we you know we still have we still have things that people haven't seen um a lot of concept art that's come out that you know people are like what is that where where did it come from so so for example this is the uh outlaw viper uh for example just so you can check it out while we're talking. Talking amongst friends back and forth. It's a delightful time. Is it just me or does the working build of the game look more fast paced than the prototype? It is a little bit more fast paced. It is. I feel like it's subtle change in how the screen shakes. Yeah, so it there's there's a lot of factors with that, Jackson, and you're gonna see more changes through every development build. Some of them are gonna be really sluggish. Some of them are gonna be really fast, and it's gonna just depend on what we're showcasing at the time. Um, Cause a lot of the optimization for game development, I'm sure a lot of you know this, but that, that happens that happens in later parts. <laughs> like we just plug stuff in. We're just like, ah, let's get it all in. We wanna show stuff. And then after that's like, okay, let's make it work. <laughs> Can you add an OP thermogun alt, like filling half of the orbit with energy orbs? Uh, okay. That's, uh, it's interesting. That's an interesting suggestion. When will the alpha be released because of the current situation? Cuz Cuz asks. Well, the we had an update about it within our Kickstarter. Um, because of the current situation, we did change the alpha drop. Um, so now we're looking at the beginning of June. Uh, late May, beginning of June. It's more likely going to be beginning of June. So we are slowly getting there. Just also know that because elements were pushed back and we've all change to our work from home situation that not much was lost in the transition in fact a lot of it is more as a gain for you guys since we're we've got like an extension on working for the alpha which means more things are going to be cleaned up and more content is going to be available once that thing's ready so no worries we will get it out the door and it's going to be great for you all really good question sandbox mode for all kickstarter backers bloodstar oh my goodness that would actually be pretty cool i, I won't deny that but um no. <laughs> the sandbox mode is the prototype. Can we upgrade and customize our base? That would be pretty dope. Wouldn't it? There was a ship that looks like an airship from one of Mobius artwork. Do you, did you guys do that on purpose? Uh... <laughs> we 
Would you guys consider creating an Everspace shmup after Everspace 2? Oh yeah, we've considered a lot of different things of what we could create after Everspace 2, but the reality is that our focus is Everspace 2. So we haven't like, it's not like we're working on this and then we're like, okay, well let's, let's figure out the next direction we need to go. The game's only like a year and a half out, people. We gotta figure out what's next. Like, whoa, calm down there. <laughs> we'll get there when we get there. Let's work on, let's work on Everspace 2. A shmup does sound kind of interesting. If you jump from location to location, will you spawn 10 miles away like in Galaxy on Fire 2? Uh, miles? What's a mile? Lol. European humor. Um, I'm, we're making it to where it's pretty definitive of where you're jumping from. All the points. No worries, top notch indeed. It's going to be solid in how you're moving about. We want to make, we're taking great care in that. A dreadnought, eh? That's why you need bigger guns. Or ships. I mean, there's nothing wrong with a light fighter that could fly into the interior of a capital ship and blow it up from the inside. That would be pretty dope, wouldn't it? <clears throat> Console text adventure win. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, Sky High, thank you for that. That was that was good. That was a good one. Very nice. <laughs> see, what else do we have? Oh, color options. I always like I like it when you guys start choosing your ships already. Um there are the, I also do want to put emphasis on this very briefly because we've shown this uh, a couple times. Some people still don't understand. <laughs> the fact of the matter is, these are dedicated uh, swatches that you choose from that just apply to your ship overall. But you also have the ability to customize your primary, secondary, and tertiary colors. So these are not the only options that will be in the game. You can mix and max and customize as well. We'll get there. We'll get there. But I love it when people are like, oh, 24. 24 is my favorite. Oh, my gosh. 20 looks sick. Look at that. 12. Mm. Give me. Give me 50. Oh, my gosh. It's great. Seeing you guys like being like, no, this is clearly the best one. I love it. I love it. And so I, I hope that you're all getting a good sense of like even just looking at this, kind of like knowing, oh, my gosh, I just like 12 is my baby. I love that green orange pop or I like the neon feel of 22. You know, give me that poison green look of 33 oh my gosh just you know give me that gold silver stylization of 38 there's so many there are so many options this is actually more of a gold anyway my point is is that like we're trying to make a lot of of really good combinations for you to choose from so you can just like get on in there on the fly but obviously you know we want you to have the customization to go further from that as well. I also want to just show this concept art once again, because like I think it's funny that we actually showed the outlaw dreadnought uh, before we actually uh, showed it. Um, it's just hard to see there, right? Like, but it's all it's all there. It's all there. That big old massive ship launching all of these outlaws attacking this freelance drone carrier that's launching all of these equipment transports away from it in time will there be any point in the game where we can board a dreadnought or carrier and control any turrets on it so top notch indeed we the focus is very much on a single uh one man fighter focus um and that's all i can really say about that right now um i know that there have been some discussions in the Discord lately talking about like being able to like have ownership of a carrier or some type of larger vessel. And it is it's a, it's a talking point that we've had. Um there is a possibility there, but obviously there's a lot of of stipulations that come with that if we were to implement it. So we have to be very careful in our approach to ensure that it does fit the feel of the game. Um, and it's good for players, right? So we'll see. We'll, we'll see is the, is the answer there. I personally like the idea. I think it could be a lot of fun, 
but it has to be implemented correctly. I'm curious, will there be random dropout events happening if you're traveling through hyperspace in the game? Yes, Darius. There will, in fact, be random dropout events. Um, and it's going to depend on where you're at with the storyline as well as your faction interactions that you've made. If you're flying through an area, for example, that everybody hates your stinking guts, you're probably going to have some more interdictions that you have to get through than a space where everybody's all happy, happy, go lucky with you. Can we expect mobile versions of... <sighs> Our focus at Rockfish Games, we are dedicated to create console and PC high quality games for you to enjoy. No mobiles. No mobiles. Mobile is not our territory any longer. It's not where we want to go. We really quite like the processing capabilities of a PC and a console in comparison. And that is where we will continue to pursue using our skill set to great glory. Will there be metallic color options? Oh, this is a really good question. So I know this is also something that we've been discussing internally. Like, what do we do regarding textures? Textures could be something really powerful that like make or break the style that you're going for. It's like, say you really like that dark green, but without the right texture, it just doesn't look right, right? So know that this is, this is an interest that we have as well. Um, it could be a talking point that we have later in development and bring it up with you guys is what that might look like and whatnot. Um, it is, we're also in a position right now where it's really hard to say since that's not the focal point right now. Like we're really ironing down the missions and bringing all that together so that the alpha is ready for you to dive into and have a sliver of what those missions look like. For example, um, aesthetics. They're kind of getting pushed back on our development timeline just because, like, we want the core gameplay to be there for you, right? Like, um, so, yeah, I hope that if it's not already on the forums, I, I think it is actually on the forums, like, but textural qualities for customization, definitely make sure that that's a talking point that's up because I think that there could be some really cool ideas that stem from that. So, yeah, so that's good. That's a good question. Sky High asks, how about Stadia or GeForce Now to play on a mobile? I guess that's a possibility. If we do come to any other um, systems or um, uh, platforms or anything like that, we will make announcements accordingly. Um, so I suppose it's possible. Hold up, is the Dreadnought by any chance commanded by a gal named Alice? No, it's not. I see what you did there. If you ever make a first-person space explorer, you will you will have all the ships ready so we don't have to wait 20 years <laughs> like SC. Oh my gosh. I mean, SC has a lot of great ideas, that is for sure. A lot of great prototypes. It's pretty neat. And we've definitely taken a lot of inspiration from it, too. But, yeah, ours is, ours is coming out next year. <laughs> Shiny or plain textures. Yep. I just realized that Dreadnought is so similar to the Valkyrie of Galaxy of Fire 2. <laughs> a lot of people have been saying that. We're making it our own, okay? Just because we have a lot of the same team that created assets for Galaxy on Fire doesn't mean we are creating a Galaxy on Fire clone, okay? This is Everspace 2. It is definitive in and of itself. The end. A daily challenge reward system would be nice. I like that idea as well. Um, that could be fun. It's going to depend on what type of challenges 
that we develop throughout the game. But we do have a lot already. Um, I'm sure that you've seen prototype footage. If you haven't, um, there's definitely a lot of different spaces and, and uh, territories that you can go in and say, go on a race or have to blow up a thing by a certain time, et cetera, et cetera. And we could have like varied missions daily challenges that players could do maybe have a leaderboard that could be that could be fun i i could definitely see that as a possibility um there's no guarantees with that because that's like whenever you go into anything where it's like online leaderboards and comparisons there there's a lot of stuff that comes with that yes it's a single player game we we don't want it to be like an always online experience like it's we want it to be yours that you can pick up and play whenever you want however you want regardless of circumstances elsewhere um so we have to take in a lot of different uh considerations and think about the ramifications if we were to move in any different direction off of where we're at right now like just that subtle chain can knock everything out of whack right but i do like the suggestion i think that's great will there be ai wingmates at any point ask pelion um yes Everspace trading card game, Solus. <laughs> I love you. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Hello from France. Hope you're doing fine despite the circumstances and things are still awesome. Hey, thank you so much for that Morcus Mor Morcus Lair. Morcus Lair? I really appreciate it wonderful i hope that you are also doing well in this time it's important that you're all staying safe and being awesome how much will 1000 gems cost for the low low price of 79.99 you can get your 1000 gem package forever space 2 to purchase all the in-game monetary transactional items that we will supply including but not limited to a single drone no no just nope <laughs> not gonna happen that is not the marketing model we desire Everspace socks now that I can get behind that oh my gosh I would totally love some Everspace socks <laughs> that's awesome any Lost in Space references uh, Danger Will Robinson <clears throat> Will the game run on a triple, triple, tr triple monitor setup? Words. Oh my gosh. Everspace 1's a bit wacky. You are correct. It does run a bit wacky. Isn't that right, Too Little Tila Mayo? Thank you for testing that out, by the way. Um, we are, we've actually talked about this before. Um, the short answer is we want it to. Uh, we've, we've seen like what happens with Everspace 1. And we, we want it to look as pretty as possible for you. So we that is something that is, like, we're, we're keeping track of it. We're looking to see how that does impact a triple monitor setup. As you probably know, there are a number of factors that come into that place as well. So it's hard to say, like, if it's going to be, like, optimized and, like, the best or if it's just better to run it from a single monitor setup. But either way, we want it to work, and we're looking into making that work. So good question. You'd buy Rockfish or Everspace shirts? Yeah, that would actually, or hoodies. Yeah, well, that's that's good to know. I'm sure that um, Michael and Christian and, and uh, a lot of other team members have been putting out their feelers to see what people would consume at that level. I'm sure that there are some other things that we've been thinking about too. Uh, so keep your eyes and ears peeled. Oh my gosh, I just love this carrier. Oh gosh. <clears throat> these artworks make 2021 seem so far away it's just a year i mean it's at the it's at the end of next year but honestly like considering where we were at with the prototype and just like even just um wh where are my buttons at like even just showing you like the stuff here with where we're at and all the new stats and all the new modifiers and the ui that we were, like, that we're covering like i hope that it shows you like there's there's actually a lot that we've been doing like even with like this territory system, like there's a lot, there's a lot. Like it's coming together, slowly but surely. So yeah, definitely, definitely know that the processes are, 
I mean, this this is crazy. Like from the the Gamescom build that is actively utilized from our Kickstarter backers versus this. It's I mean, what do you guys think? Is this like night and day? Do the first combat counter again without using alt so we can see sweat. Oh gosh. Okay, I can try. We'll see what happens. Rockfish mugs. Excelsior, you're a man after my own heart. I love it. Okay, let me, um, I have to do the thing where I, where I hide things uh, to do this. So one second, go ahead and look at the, the, pretty, uh, the, the pretty floating ship in space. Go to that Discord link. It's good for your health. It's good for your soul. Oh my gosh, is it ever? What a, what a beautiful time to be alive. Get in on that action and you'll see so much goodness. Uh, let me just see if I can make sure everything's not going to destroy me when I instantly warp out of here. Oh, good. It probably is. That's fine. Uh, we'll sweat it out. Because my boss wants me to. And I'm obligated to do so. <laughs> so let's just get this all set up nice and tight. Okay. Okay. All right, here, we're back. Let's sweat a little bit. Ugh. Drink more water, everybody. It's important, especially if you are doing self-quarantine, which is basically everybody I rec recognize, but like staying well hydrated, it's good for your immune system. It's good just to stay on top of the game. Make sure you're drinking dat water. It is a little bit warm in my studio space, so if you see my hair looking like it's getting a little sweaty, that's because it is. Please don't make fun of me too much. You'll hurt my wheel wings. All right, let's go blow stuff up. Oh! <laughs> I guess I loaded the right save file. All right, so I'm not pushing G. We're not gonna use the ultimate. This is gonna be fun. Okay. Akabara. Your suggestion is interesting. I would like to see it branded with the gunship. We're just gonna keep that between you and me. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, here we go. Oh, oh. I don't know if the, the mic picked that up, but that felt good. Okay. <laughs> now the good news, the good news, I'll, I'll tell you all this much, is that we haven't implemented like a bunch of crazy um, AI uh, uh, maneuvers yet. So a lot of them have the same basic AI that was in Everspace 1 applied to them, which is basically I see enemy, I fly at enemy. Let's get this last one. Okay. All right, we just have scouts left. Everything, everything's great from here. Everything's super duper. I'm gonna try and use the flat cannon a little bit because it's fun. It's kind of hard to hit though. Oh, whoops, we're full on equipment. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Yeah, we, we need a better shield. As you can tell, actually this is a good talking point right now. As you can see from the upper left, you can see that our shields are indicated by the blue bar, our armor is indicated by the orange bar, and our health is by the red bar. And depending on how much it provides, it actually does uh, change in size. So you can tell that our shield sucks in comparison to our hole in our armor. Like our armor is really good. There we go. And now, we have a bunch of clutter on the map. <laughs> Feels good though. Yeah! 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 Yeah, yeah those suicide drones, they are... Whew, 
nightmare fuel inducing? Like the second you start hearing that ping, oh my gosh. And just you wait, because the setups that we're going to have for you to experience them. <laughs> oh. We're nice developers, I promise. Talon 24, I see enemy. I fly at enemy. Why wow, you guys took my gameplay and turned it into AI? <laughs> oh, that's great. But uh, yeah, we th we have been um, we have been talking a lot about um, maybe not recently, but we have been talking about varying AI of the ships. Like whenever I showed you the bomber, for example, you probably saw that it was floating back, firing missiles, and then when we got up close, it started attacking us, and then it boosted past us. Right? We want to have these unique AI patterns and um, and like different ways that the encounters are going to go not only based on the enemy that you're fighting, but also the level of the enemy. So if you encountered two of exactly the same enemy type, they could operate somewhat differently based on their level and their equipment. So we're seeing what that looks like. We're seeing what that looks like. Obviously there's a lot that comes with that and uh, we don't want to get carried away because uh, that takes a lot of development time, but we'll see what you can do. So it's not going to just be you see enemy, it flies straight at you. There's going to be some different, differing uh, setups and uh, some optimization and some improvisation that you'll need to make depending on what you're facing and where you're at. Also, there's, a, there's another fun little fact. So a lot of the... Actually, everything that you see... Everything you see, you can actually, like, get to. Um, so, for example, like, this this asteroid way over here. These aren't just background elements. They are actually asteroids. But also, when you get too far, because each location is generated in an area, it will kick you back into the more meaningful play area. So I kind of lied there. Let me let me take back what I said. The objects that you see actually exist, but you can't technically get to all of them because there's a certain distinct play area that we have defined for you to go and explore and have combat in because it's all handcrafted. If you were able to actually venture outward and go to everywhere and we handcrafted everything, we'd basically be designing an entire galaxy except multiple, uh, multiple locations thereof. And that's just way too much work. Like, it would, the game would never get finished, Star Citizen. So, like, we want to make sure that the game is done. And by putting emphasis in each one of these locations, then you're able to, like, go, go about your business, take care of and explore what we've crafted for you, and it'll be a good time. Double tap Q or E to barrel roll. I want that. Yeah, you know... You know, that's actually... I actually really like that point. Coming from... Our man Docs VR, our man Docs, our man Docs VR. Um, I think that's a cool idea. It has been an internal discussion. I think that it does feel a little too gimmicky in some cases. It can be done correctly. Don't get me wrong. Um, but we wanted to have specific functionality if we were to have something where your ship spins around really fast. Like, does it feel right? Does it look right? Does it does it have weight to it? And as of right now, um, from our exploration, eh, it's kind of, it's kind of tricky. It's kind of tricky to vouch for it. But that doesn't mean it's not going to happen. It just means that we haven't really put a lot of emphasis there. If you think that it needs to happen, dang it, and you're not going to buy the game unless we do this, um, then I would actually tell you to calm down. But I would recommend voicing your opinion on the forums and uh, also on Discord and having a discussion, seeing what other people think. Uh, maybe referencing other games that you enjoy that do that type of interaction for dogfighting because obviously there's going to be a lot of dogfighting in our game. Then we'll see what we can do. We'll see where we can meet each other. Circle Strafe Scouts win when they're ready. Boom. I mean, that's... 
That's a crappy answer. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. You're. I bet you don't like me anymore. I'm sorry, Sinhara. I do appreciate the question, but we will absolutely bring back them beautiful scouts and their circle strafing. But also note, I've already talked a little bit about this. With the new AI that your opponents are going to have, there may be some AI that knows your circle strafing and could possibly counter that. So depending on your situation and what you're doing, it could be really good or even worse for you. So we'll see where we take the AI systems. There's a lot, a lot of places we could go. Space traffic control! That is a busted gun. The lights are working pretty well though. We actually we actually received the request to have lights turn on and off from the ships. <laughs> so we did it. There you go, you're welcome. You're welcome everybody. <laughs> we did it! Yay! <laughs> Oh my goodness. There is so much junk out here. Is the music already getting better? Oh yes. We are we're happy with where the music has has come from and where it has gone. We are very pleased. And there's a lot more surprises regarding the music. I want uh let's see wait. Does the armor, does armor, is the, is armor the same like HP damage value or is, does it reduce damage from enemies by percentage? Okay, so this is a really good question. Let's talk about how armor works very briefly. This, this is good, this is good. So in Everspace 1, if you recall, weapons had hull damage and shield damage. Those were the only two different types of damages in the game of Everspace 1. If you had armor, it was a reduction from your whole damage as a percentage. So if you took 10 damage and you had 10% armor, you would only take 9 damage to your whole. That has changed in Everspace 2. In Everspace 2, we use kinetic and energy DPS. Kinetic DPS is specifically used against armor. Energy DPS is specifically used against shields. They are both used dealing damage to the hull. So if I'm only firing an energy weapon and I take out your shields and you don't have any armor, then it's going to do both the kinetic and energy damage to your hull. This way, it's going to diversify the weapon types and how effective they're going to be in your situations. And it's also going to allow us to change up the enemy types that you'll be experiencing. You'll have some that are super buffed up shields, but they don't have any armor. Or you'll have ones that have a really nice balance of shields and armor. Or you'll find them that are like super beef tank armored fools that like are going to resist freaking everything, but they don't have any shields. And there's going to be a lot more twists that we can throw in there because of how we're separating these elements out. So instead of it being a reduction of damage, it's a different type of uh, stat that you have to maintain and balance through your travels. So because we have this heat plating, we have a ridiculous armor bonus. So that blocks basically any energy damage completely. All armor does is it absorbs all energy. All shield does is absorb all kinetic. Hole doesn't block either. Are you doing the music yourself or do you let someone outside the studio make it? We do have an in-house musician and sound designer. His name is Giho. Um, he's, he's stayed with us from Everspace One. Um, he did all of the music and uh, the sound effects there. And we are still utilizing him to my knowledge. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's been pounding this all out. Um, I really like his work. Um, I know that we're still trying to, or like still looking into some elements to try and make them better. Like we already talked about the weapon sounds and whatnot. We just want it to be more crisp. We want to make sure that it's truly where it needs to be. And so we're not going to stop until we are satisfied and we have some pretty high expectations. 
But yeah, he's been doing some pretty good work for us. Map screen retextures, please. I want my galaxy on fire. Oh my gosh. Lunacy! You deserve a slap. Yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Can they fly after the player? Uh, uh, the Jab Jabroni Beating. My goodness, what a username. Um, you're asking, can they fly after the player? I'm sure you were referring to something that was happening on screen before. Are you talking about the the uh, like the detonation drones? And can they see when the player will turn on the lights on the ship? Um, yeah, like so. Yeah, they're basically gonna track you no matter where you're at currently. Um, I do like the concept of turning your lights off and then making it harder for enemy ships to be able to see you. Uh, that could be a discussion point that comes up on Discord or in the forums. I like that idea. Another mechanic, maybe some ships dropping in and killing you, but just a 180 degree turn is a bit plump. Okay. Can you make the enemies fly into the asteroids in a high-speed chase? Um, the AI is going to mostly avoid asteroids, but we do have a grapple mechanic. Um, let's see if I can find some stuff to grab. Um, and the grapple mechanic is going to be something that has varying features and powers. Oh man, I destroyed them all. Shoot, I don't think I can grab anything here, unfortunately. But essentially, the grapple mechanic allows you to grab elements that are physical out in space and toss them around. It could be something as simple as a piece of debris. You could use it partially as a shield for a duration. Or it could be an actual enemy, like a drone that you grab and then you chuck into an asteroid, for example. Which is where I was going through that entire uh, little conversation. Is there a cave here? I thought there was. Goodness gravy, it's dark. Oh my gosh, there is. All right. Ooh, a sticky turret. Yay, those are my favorite. Those are nanobots. Where's my sticky turret? I don't see my sticky turret. Oh well. I didn't want it anyway. Take that game. That's fine. Oh, you know what? I probably... I probably didn't pick it up. Ha! <laughs> cause my inventory is full. Let me show you the sticky turret cause it's kind of fun. Um, how do I drop things? Oh yeah, destroy. So a sticky turret is something very simple. Basically, whenever you use it, it makes a turret <coughs> on an asteroid for you. So now this guy's gonna basically help me in any situation that I have to deal with. Sounds like it's raining, I just noticed. I think that's in the music. <laughs> oh yeah, I can do the bomber encounter again. I'm just trying to answer questions and whatnot. This is going to be the Doom Eternal of space combat games. Prove me wrong. Wow, what a that's a that's a pretty that's a pretty bold statement. That'd be pretty neat. We'll find out. Well, some guns feature acid rounds. I know that we have corrosion as one of the effect types in the game. Um, there's going to be a lot of different conditions. That's what they're called. We have a lot of different conditions that can be applied to enemy ships, applied to yourself, that are going to change uh, your decisions, for sure. So, it's more than possible that we would have corrosion weapons in the game. Probably not to the same extent that the corrosion missiles had as an effect in Everspace 1, but maybe something that's stackable there, for sure. Will there be capital ship battles? Um, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and, and do some things. Let's um, let's go ahead and prep some stuff. Let's make some more interesting decisions here. 
I also want to try and clear the map for you. <laughs> so give me a second or two. I'm going to try and uh, clear things out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to spawn uh, one of the larger enemy types. A, a larger enemy type, excuse me. Not not like the largest. Yeah, no, no, not even close. But uh, something that's a little bit a little bit cooler to see. Um, let's see. Okay, I think I've got something here for you. We're gonna make things a, a little bit more interesting. Uh, first, I need to repair myself because I I got hurt. But here, let me show you. Uh, let me show you. This shows that the armor and the repair menu is completely depleted. So in order to repair it, we have to select it there um, and repair it. And boom, now it's completely back up. It costs 69 credits. This will probably be changed in the full game for two reasons. One, because we're not that meme-centric, and two, because it's not balanced. So, Bloodstar says, nice. Of course. <laughs> but yeah. Can you stick Sticky Turret to another drone or ship? As of right now, no. I think that could be an interesting concept, but it might be hard to make work. I mean, I'm sure we could find a way, but... Mm. So anyway, I went ahead and I spawned a... <clears throat> enemy. And by A, I mean a couple. So let's see. We've got an outlaw destroyer over here. Let's go see what he's doing. So this is, I would call him a mini boss. Um, he actually is damaging himself. And he has these weak points inside. But he also closes those weak points. You can see the coils are gone now. And he's gained his armor back. Now, because of the enemies that are shooting at me, he's actually taking way more damage than he normally would. But you can see that every time he closes those coils, he gains armor back. Now, I'm level 2 and he's level 1, and I have some equipment that's a little bit... I mean, it's just better. So he's basically just a loot pinata right now for me. Um, otherwise, these enemies... Let's go ahead and use our ultimate again. <laughs> Feels good. Takes him out pretty quickly. There were moments there I was worried. The odds were certainly against you. Hmm. I think it's kind of funny that we actually, uh... We pulled a lot of the same, uh, sound files, as you just saw there, that we had from Everspace 1, and just plugged them in. So... It's really funny. I, I, I think that's actually pretty hilarious, because, like... You just saw, like, Adam and Hive talking, and they're totally not... That's not what's happening here at all. That's Everspace 1 interaction. <laughs> I've never actually seen that pop up before in, uh, in Everspace 2. We uh, plug those in so that there's going to be more banter and whatnot that you'll have with companions and whatnot. I probably shouldn't actually talk about that, that too much. But, uh, but you're going to... I mean, you're going to be experiencing your character uh, in two capacities. One in how you are playing them and then also how they are interacting with who you find and... Um, who else is out there, right? So there'll be a lot more of that. Yeah, text to, text to speech placeholder. Yep.
Yeah, look at this nice, easy circle strafe against an opponent that doesn't know what to do. We're too powerful for him. In fact, we're still working on the AI to where it doesn't shoot itself. Uh, so, like, if I stay, if I stop right here, those turrets are actually blasting its ship. So there's a bit of AI work to be done. But rest assured, we do have some larger enemies um, as of right now. There's going to be much larger ones. I mean, I showed you the concept art. Um, we also have some critters that are probably going to be a decent size. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. There's a bit going on. Is there anything else that I can show you guys that you would like to see here in the last uh, 10 minutes of the stream? We also have the, you know, the region again, which you can see from the map. You guys have been asking some great questions. I really do appreciate you just hanging out, seeing the current dev build and what we're, where we're at, what we're working on. Grendel! What have I missed? Basically everything. <laughs> we showed the full game, the entire storyline. It's, it's done. We've just been hiding it. And now we're not showing it again and nobody's allowed to say a word. <laughs> Man, that would be the cruelest thing ever. Now, we've just been talking about a lot of the components that we've already shown, uh, Grindel. Just like the alts. We've been talking about the map and the regions, like this. Uh, we've been talking about uh, item inventory and ship management a little bit. Not Nothing too crazy. We've been going over a little bit. Will the VOD be saved? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, Koratora. You will be able to watch. Grindel, do you have any questions in these last 10 minutes? I might be able to do something for you. It's been released as well, yeah. Yeah, this is version 1.7. We've actually had seven different versions since the 1.0 release. You guys are crazy. <laughs> Sentinel type? Uh, yeah, so this ship is the Sentinel. It's, this is a Sentinel-1 specifically. Yep. First person view of spaceships, please! Your request has been completed! Yeah, so obviously, still working on it. Uh, some some placeholders in, uh, in effect right now, but we definitely want to make sure that cockpit play is going to be rewarded and it's going to look clean and good and not be a bunch of placeholder-y things. Um, but yeah, it's coming together. It's coming together. And depending on what type of cockpit you have on your ship, you will have more or less visibility out the windows. It's kind of fun. Fun little uh, stat. And also if your wings sweep forward, for example, you will be able to see them as well. So this isn't just a cockpit only and we just put a little camera inside of it. Like, you're actually looking at what's out there, including your ship itself. Yeah. The biggest draw of the original. Neat! There, glad to hear that. Yeah, we're pretty happy with the results uh, that we've been um, exploring. But uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot more to come. There's a lot more to come for sure. Alpha win. Grindel, this is a good question. Um, we have been telling people that we're looking at the beginning of June for the alpha. Um, we have like seven minutes left. Guys, I'm just going to straight up tell you, be looking for next week. We've got a lot of stuff to show you next week. You heard it right here first. Boom. Definitely, definitely be here next week. We're going to have a lot of new stuff to cover. The big drop's going to come from the big man himself. But uh, I wanted to... The, the big part of this stream was to make sure that you could all see progress is happening. We have new and improved systems. Things are coming together. We are feeling really good about this. And we want to show you more. So as we are diving into these new spaces with this new UI and new ships 
and new enemy types and new mechanics entirely. Like we desire so much to be in conversation with you regarding how these elements are coming together, which is why I constantly am talking about go share your ideas on the forums, go join us on the discord, you know, ask us these questions, present, present your thoughts, be frustrated with us, you know, be joyous with us. Like we can't, we can't cultivate this together and make the best possible game without you sharing where you're at with all of this. And we really do hope that you join us along for the ride through this development, because this is such a beautiful time to be alive working with developers like cultivating all of this i said cultivating twice but you get what you get what i'm saying like this is so oh my gosh it's just we want we want this to happen we want this to happen so hard so please please hang out and definitely watch next week's stream <laughs> Is the lightning gun still as OP as it was? Um, yes, except more so, because now it's an ultimate. Um, yeah, we've shown the ultimate a couple times, but basically um, the ultimate for the Sentinel is static overload, which basically converts your weapon into a lightning coil, which allows you to blast basically everything at once. And it's not where it's like reduced damage, it's full damage to everything that it connects with. It's, it's pretty baller actually. Do you know about a game called God Factory Wingman? No, I've not heard of it. I personally have not heard of it. You have to drop it in the Discord and uh, maybe share like a reference link. Maybe I can check over it. Toggleable drifting mechanic. Oh, we have that. Uh, or rather, we are going to have that. Yeah, we will have that, Excelsior. 100%. Yep. That's already been confirmed. We will have the ability to disable your inertia dampeners. A lot of people have been requesting it. We just want to make sure that you're getting what you requested, basically. And it will have a functionality to it, but also remember, this is an arcadey space shooter with a lot of things that you can run into and go boom. So if you turn off your inertia dampeners and immediately die, it's your fault, not ours, okay? Just making sure that's clear. <laughs> Same space time, same space channel. Yes, Koopa King 540. That is absolutely true. Next week. Love to have you there. I see a quest mission tracker there. Can we have multiple quest missions tracked at the same time? Yes. Yes, we can. Yes, you will. Yeah, Shark uh, Sheiker, I know that right now even, like it looks like there's a lot of stuff going on on the screen because there is. There's a lot of stuff, a lot of UI, and we recognize that this can be what the experience ends up looking like. And it's not very clean. It's, it's kind of jumbled together, right? We recognize that. This is not done. We are still working on this. We're still moving things forward. We want to make sure that it's clear in where stuff's at for you to collect, but we also want to make sure that you get all the pretties without a bunch of stuff just in your way um, and mission markers as well I would love to click on the mission tab it's not something that I'm allowed to show you um, but basically you can choose which missions are active and which missions aren't active you can hide missions entirely or you can have them like have like three or four actually I think it might just be one currently but like you have a the option to choose like what is your active mission to tell you where to go and what to do versus all of your other missions that you've accrued. We're already considering that stuff. No worries whatsoever. Sky High says the best and most transparent Kickstarter and developer ever. I love it. Thanks for that. RFG is awesome. My goodness. Thank you for that. My goodness. You are the hero. You are the champion. We are doing our due diligence to keep you informed and knowledgeable about our game because if you don't know what's happening in the game, then why would you buy it? So, but uh, thank you for being here and thank you for that compliment. That was very kind of you. Thank you. If you turn your inertia dampeners off, can you accelerate to ridiculous speeds or will other any other benefit to the skill gap to fly without them? So if you disable it, you'll still be able to move quickly. 
Um, you're not gonna like automatically gain some new speed boost from it, but what you will be able to do is like if you're boosting forward really fast and then turn around, you'll still be flying in that same direction, but then fire behind you, for example. But then when you collide with an asteroid, that's your fault. Um, so yeah. It's a give and take sort of thing. Korotor says, I hate UI with a passion. Ugh! All right. That's a good that's a good starting point representing your emotions. That's good. All right. Now let's talk about it. <laughs> we have to we have to start small. Okay, we've identified our emotion. This is good. That's the foundation. Now, what about it do you not like? This is the part where we can start that discussion. Good. Get in the Discord. Excellent. Got him. <laughs> Yeah, I'll tell you what, like when somebody says, I hate X about a game, that's that's about as helpful as wiping before you poop. It just, it's, come on. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> okay guys, the stream is now done. <laughs> I'm about to go crazy. I really appreciate all of you have been just sitting through this, asking some freaking amazing questions, just being a part of the stream as we showcase our current build of Everspace 2. Um, I know that there's a lot to look forward to for a lot of you people. Some of you have concerns. That's great. That is super fantastic. That means you're passionate about a certain component of the game and you want to talk about it. So join the conversation. Please, please join the conversation and come to the Discord with us. Mm, that beautiful Discord link is right on the screen. Discord gg slash rockfish games it's the place to go it's the place to be for all of your conversation uh, shenanigans and it will be glorious because nobody's going to hate your guts there it's a, it's a really positive community if there are opposing viewpoints we've had some pretty strong success with people coming together recognizing that they're being extreme or if you know there is something to to pull out of that i actually want to give a shout out right now to hazy he's been a pretty strong champion on the discord talking through where people are at and their thoughts um so super super community member right there big shout out to hazy known as hazy devil here in, in twitch chat um be more like him be engaging be thoughtful be fruitful the most important thing because nobody likes somebody who's just a debbie downer nobody likes that so definitely 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 join that discord um there isn't a link on the screen but you can also go to uh everspace.game where we do have a forum and share a lot of your questions and thoughts there as well so by all means get up in that it is wonderful um let's see i'm gonna answer just a couple more questions very briefly um i have just a blank screen hang on a second we'll just pop this into the background uh, real quick um, just wanted to answer a couple more questions very quick very quickly rapid fire questions um, So will there be a bigger ship to attack? Yes um, You guys are doing a stellar job guys keep up the great work excellent to hear soundtrack sounds dope already. Thank you so much There's more to come um, Let's see when does the next stage come out the alpha we're looking at an early June release We'll have more information about that probably next week <clears throat> um, Let's see uh, Let's see, you can't balance it and the ship have the thrusters can move sideways and backwards and so blah, blah, blah. Let's see, too big UI for once, possibly. Um, let's see, anything, I've been wiped, I've been, oh my gosh, Caden. <laughs> I don't see any more questions, guys. Thank you so much. If I did miss your questions, please join the Discord. Let's have a discussion about it. Sincerely, like I'm not just saying that to say, like I, I'm gonna go to the discord right now and I'm gonna like say hello and then I'm gonna go take care of my kids But like I'm in there. I'm, I'm talking with people. Uh, it's gonna be a good time. All right Discord is over there. Yeah, basically. So, um, so that's all I got for you guys. You have been awesome I have been Eric Schrader the community ambassador for rockfish games. I live to serve you Don't stop being awesome and we'll see you next week with some pretty cool stuff. Toodles!